What's up, y'all? Morning, Kimberly Powell. Good morning. Good morning, Lawrence. Good morning. Good morning, good morning, Carl, good morning. Craig, top of the morning to you. Jonathan, good morning, Matt, good morning. Nicole, good morning. All right, all right, all right. We're a little bit behind the eight ball this morning, man. Uh, I was on with charter and can't get my laptop connected to the internet for whatever reason so it's just us facebook aloha how rico uh, so hopefully by the time we end the show today um we are uh we'll be all right i'm good back uh a little frustrated this morning but uh that don't stop the show uh, I was in the middle of preparing some stuff and I realized I couldn't connect so it kind of threw me off my game a little bit, but I'm solid. Good morning, good morning. All right, so there is no need to play the intro music because we don't have YouTube and that's kind of that goes with YouTube more so than Facebook. So uh, really quickly, do me a huge favor. Uh, go ahead and share the stream if you haven't already. And if you haven't clicked on the little man to get notifications about the show, then go ahead and do that as well so you get notified every time we go live. But today we're talking about taxes. Uh, and can taxes really be the economic saving grace for black people? I think so. Because you got to remember, Uncle Sam, even though he's a figurative char government character, uh, any government character is your servant and not your slave master. So we're going to talk about that today. So go ahead and share the stream. Uh, for those of you who have never seen the show, I'd like to let you know exactly who the show is for. The show is for risers and grinders, man. You've got to be ready to get up, get out, and get something. And if that's you, this is your show. This show is a, a, about building legacies and for legacy builders. So if you are the type of person that are, uh, are trying to do everything that you can to make sure your great, great, great grandchildren are proud to bear your name or even know who you are, this is your show. This show is definitely for you, right? This show is for, for those who understand the power in sacrifice. See, a lot of people think when it comes to sacrifice, they're losing something. No, there is power in sacrifice. So if you understand that and you're willing to make some tough sacrifices for your people, and meaning when I say your people, I'm talking about your family first and foremost, your future descendants. See, if... We, we like to say our people and then think about the whole totality of the black community. Sometimes if we just make a sacrifice for the next generation, if every single black person was doing that, that would be a sacrifice for our people as a whole. So go ahead and share the stream if you haven't already. Now, who is the show not for? The show is not for that person who is looking for a handout versus a hand up. This ain't your show because we don't do welfare. Right? This show isn't for that person who has... Uh, that weird relationship with money. You think money is evil. Capitalism is a, a, a dirty word. You think wealthy people are jerks. Nah, this ain't your show. This ain't your show. If you don't strive to be wealthy, you probably couldn't understand some of the content that we produce here. And if that's you, cool. Hey, Uncle Dale, what's going on? So if that's you, this ain't your show, period. If you are, are the type of person who, who, who's waiting on Donald Trump to fix the economy instead of focusing on your economy, this is not your show. You can exit stage left and uh, we won't miss you at all, right? Um, so, I can tell you each and every morning, if you've never seen a future billionaire before, and yes, that's billion with a B, I want you to take a screenshot, cheese, and watch your boy work. 2027 is going down. And you might be saying, how the heck are you going to become a billionaire in 10 years? I, I don't know. Ask the founders of Uber. It didn't take them 10 years to get there. They worth three billion. They're less than 10 years old. Did it take Google 10 years to get to a billion there? No, nah, uh, no, man. You just got to have some game. And your boy got game, man. So today we're talking about taxes. And uh, as the 
economic saving grace for black people. Uncle Sam is your servant and not your slave master. Let me say that again. Uncle Sam is your servant and not your slave master. The problem that we're having in our community is that we refuse to learn for ourselves. We refuse to learn for ourselves. And when you don't learn something for yourself, you don't get proper perspective. See, somebody can teach me something from their perspective and that's a good start. But until I learn it from myself and see how it applies directly to me, then I really don't get a full understanding. So we've all been taught about taxes and most of us have been taught from a standpoint that taxes are evil. Right? Type evil in the chat if you've been taught about taxes and you've been taught to think taxes are evil, right? Let, let's have a little dialogue this morning. I'm going to power down these devices since I can't seem to get online for whatever reason. Type evil if you are the type of person that's been taught, whether it was directly or indirectly by parents, by, by, by co-workers or other people, and you've been taught that, man, taxes are just evil, right? We've all been kind of taught that, uh, and we've been kind of taught to fear Uncle Sam, and that is the problem. So the first thing I want to help you to understand is that you have to get proper perspective. Proper perspective. See, when you until you look at something differently, you will never see it a different way. Until you look at something differently, you will never see it a different way. So today, after today, you're going to see taxes in a completely different light. Some of you guys have already, so, so if you're already starting to think differently, just by the title of the show, Uncle Sam is your servant and not your slave master. It's, some of you guys, just with that thought process right there, has completely changed the way you see taxes, right? Taxes can be the economic saving grace for black people. Uncle Sam is your servant and not your slave master, right? So what do I mean by economic uh, 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 taxes can be an economic saving grace? A lot of times we think that people are flooding this country from all over the world because it's just a great place to live. No, they're flooding this country from all over the world because there is a tool that we have and, 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 and we are one of the only countries that have this tool for building wealth. And guess what that tool is? It is the United States Tax Code. The United States Tax Code is the greatest wealth building tool in the entire world. The United States Tax Code is the number one wealth building tool in the entire world. But when you think about a tool, I want you to think about power tools, for instance. Right? Can anybody and everybody pick up a miter saw and work wonders with it when it comes to molding and, and baseboards and stuff like that? Nope. I want you to think about the tool of a hammer. I can put a hammer in, in the hand of a master carpenter and he can make beautiful music with it. You can put that same hammer in my hand, for instance, or in somebody else's hand and, and, and it might look like a weapon more than a tool, right? So just like any other tool, the tax code is a tool. Just like most tools, there's only a handful of people that actually know how to use those tools proficiently. So we're going to break down using the tax code as a tool proficiently today so you'll understand how to use this as a tool. But then I can't give you all the game in one hour. You're going to have to go and do your own research. You're going to have to go and start to study this stuff for yourself. Because remember, I can give it to you from my perspective, but until you do the self-study and how it actually applies to you, you're not going to get the most benefits. 
So I'm going to teach you how to use this tax code as a tool. Remember, Uncle Sam is your servant. He's not your slave master. So you first have to look at the tax code differently. So many of us look at it in the eyes with, with the eyes of fear. It's like, man, the IRS, the IRS is going to come after me. Look at Lauren Hill and Wesley Snipes and, and this person and that person who got locked up for back taxes and all that stuff. So we fear taxes. You should understand something, man. The difference, the main difference between poor people, middle class and working people, if, if you can even call it middle class anymore, because middle class is now just working poor. Uh, the main difference between those people and wealthy people is wealthy people partner with Uncle Sam. Poor people run from Uncle Sam. Wealthy people partner with Uncle Sam put Uncle Sam to work, poor people run from Uncle Sam or Uncle Sam or they're working for Uncle Sam, right? That is the main difference. The main difference. Poor people run from Uncle Sam, wealthy people partner with Uncle Sam and put Uncle Sam to work for them as their servant, the same way they do any other public official. So what do I mean that, that, that taxes could be the economic saving grace for black people, right? Let's just start with, let's just start with the tax refund, right? Let's just start with a tax refund. One thing that we're good at as black folks is we are, uh, we, we are good at making babies, right? And because we make babies and because we don't make a whole lot of money, those babies can uh, provide for us a tax deduction or an allowance that usually allows for us to get big tax refunds, right? And I, I'm sorry, I, my, my computer wouldn't come up. I was actually going to go live from my laptop so I can do some screen share stuff and show you. Think about the people who get five, six, seven, eight thousand dollar tax refunds every single year. We're talking about the tax code being a saving grace. What if those people took half of that tax refund? I don't know. Say it's they get eight thousand, they took four thousand, and they put it in a fund that's going to return them ten percent rate of return, right? And they they do that for children. Usually, you can you can get the uh, earned income credit for your children from the time they're born all the way up through the time they are. Uh, um, you know, 18, maybe 21, 22, if they go to college, something like that. Just say 20 years. Just say 20 years. If they put the 4000 in the, an account every year for 20 years, still take the, the other 4000 and blow it like they normally do, right? But they take 4000 and they put it into a fund that's going to generate a 10% rate of return. Now, just the 4,000 alone with, with no, um, with no interest, the 4,000 times 20 years will become 80,000. That's with no interest, right? I don't have my interest calculator uh, up or else I, I will give you what the interest would be in 20 years. But say that, that 4,000 a year in, uh, at a good 10% a rate of return, will probably grow to about $300,000, $350,000 in 20 years, right? Now, say they take that same $320,000, $340,000, they don't give it to the children. Why? Because that's not scriptural. <laughs> you guys know I'm a Christian. So the Bible says a good man leaves an inheritance for their children's children. So now you've been doing this for 20 years. Your child is 20 years old. You got $320,000 sitting in an account. Then you take that 320 and you put it in an account for your, your firstborn grandchild. So your child's child. So your child's child now even if they're not born, has a $320,000 nest egg that they're starting with from the time they enter this earth until 
the date that you set that it's going to be released to them. And I say 30, 35 years old is about the time because the way uh, uh, the system is set up, it really takes us about that long to mature. It really takes us about that long to mature now. Now, could some others mature a little bit faster? But yeah, so now you're taking that 320000 and you put it into an account that's going to bear at least the same 10% rate of return for another 30 years. That becomes about $2 million for your grandchildren. And the way that wealthy people do it is when your grandchildren get to the age of 30 and that money is uh, released to them and it's $3 million, they're going to take $1.5 million and do the same thing for their kid or their grandkid. And now that $1.5 becomes 5 in 30 years. And they still get to live off the interest of $1.5 million, which at 10% is somewhere around anywhere between $100,000 and uh, $150,000 per year. So when we talk about taxes being an economic saving grace, we have to teach people that, yes, you can get that big fat refund each and every year, but let's learn some strategies on what we can do with that kind of money. Let's learn some strategies on what we can do with it and how to create real, lasting, generational wealth. Now, you guys know, if you've been following the show for any length of time, I'm not a big proponent of the tax refund, right? Give me my money all year long. Don't hold it and give it to me in a lump sum because chances are those people who are receiving those tax refunds they're struggling all year long. They're dealing with payday loans. They're dealing with bank overdraft fees. They're, they're dealing with late fees and stuff. The bills are behind. They're paying extra reconnection fees because their stuff getting disconnected. They struggle all year long uh, 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 and, and they're praying and waiting on that fat refund to help, help, help them get out of that hole, right? What if you got your money all year long? So we're talking about taking a different look and a different perspective when it comes to taxes, right? Until you see things differently, until, until, until you take a different look at something, you will never see it differently. I want you guys to take a different look at taxes and the tax code. I want you to not fear the tax code any longer. I want you to not see it as some evil thing that you just got to, to pay and there's nothing you can do about it. No, I want you to understand that the tax code is the number one wealth building tool in all the world. So let's look at it from a different perspective, right? Because you guys know that there's two sets of tax laws, right? Right, right, two sets. If you understand, there's two sets of tax laws in America. Type in two sets. If you understand, there's two sets of tax laws in America. I want you to write two sets. The first set of tax laws is for the employee. The first set of tax laws is for the employee. Let me get this back up so I can have, so I can keep it track with the time. The first set of tax laws is for the employee. The second set of tax laws is for the business owner, investor, and landowner. You guys got to remember who set this whole thing up. When, 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 when the rebels uh, or the uh, yeah, defected from uh, 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 Europe, those who are the founding fathers of this country were landowners, investors, and business owners. So they set everything up to benefit them. The other class of people that came to this country out of, uh, that, that were were. Uh, 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 seduced to coming here were the indentured servers or the employee. There is a set of tax laws for them and then there is a set for the business owners, landowners, and investors. The set of tax laws for the uh, employee, you get like 15 tax deductions. 15. 
You know, you, you, you get an allowance for being married, you get allowance for having children, each one of your children can be a deduction uh, or an allowance. Um, you can write off your uh, mortgage interest if you're financing a house. You can write off student loan interest if you have to borrow money to go to school. Um, earned income credit for the amount of children that you have if you make less than a certain amount of money. Uh, if you go green and get an energy efficient furnace put in your house, they'll let you write off that. You get a new roof on the house, you can write that off. You put some new windows in that's energy efficient. You write, you're limited to about 15 tax deductions as an employee. As a business owner, investor, or landowner, the number is really unlimited. But they, they, if you look at the tax code and the number of codes, there are for businesses. There's about 450, but then there's combinations and, and different creative ways. There's there there's a lot of gray area there. It's a lot of gray area there. So you can literally there's literally over 500. But let's just say we, we just be conservative and say 100 450. You guys see the difference in that disparity? 15 as an employee. That means I'm limited to what I can deduct, what I can write off, what I can get a tax break on. As an employee, over, or as a business owner, landowner, or investor, over 450. How can this be the saving grace for black people to help black people create wealth? Number one, everybody's, if, if you're making 100% of your income through labor, then your biggest expense is your tax bill. I'm going to say it again. If you're like 95% of Americans, you're making 100% of your income through labor. When you make your income through labor only, your biggest expense is your tax bill. But again, I'm here to give you a different perspective about that tax bill. Right, right now it's the biggest. It's about 33% of your income. And that's just income tax. We want you to understand that out of income tax, you still have real estate tax, personal property tax, gas tax, schools tax, sales tax. Working Americans are literally taxed about 50 to 60 percent of their income, but they're taxed at they, they, they pay it pennies at a time. So it doesn't feel like you're paying, giving up 60 percent of your income to taxes. I'm going to run that one back. Working Americans are literally paying 50 to 60 percent of their income in taxes. They're just paying them pennies at a time so it doesn't seem like that. You don't believe me? You don't believe me? Think about before you even got your paycheck, you've already paid 33% of that income in taxes. Once you got your paycheck, then you paid another seven, eight, nine cent if you're in Memphis in sales tax on everything that you brought. That's another 9% on top of the 33%. You're paying nine cent, seven to nine cent off of every dollar you spend. So that's another seven to nine cent a percent on top of the 33 percent that you were taxed from your job so now we're at 40 percent already then if you own a home like i do now you have to pay two three thousand dollars in real estate tax depending on the value of your home right then if you live in the city you might have to ha uh, pay, pay city tax and state tax on top of that now we're up to about 45, 47% of my income has gone to taxes. But because we pay them pennies at a time, we don't think that if we could add up all of those pennies and compare that to the total amount of income that we received, you would see that 50%, 50 to 60% of a working, working person's income is paid in taxes. The thing is, you get to handle a little bit of that money first, so you don't really realize because you're getting what you want out of uh, uh, some of that money, so you don't realize that. So here's how 
you use the tax code to build wealth. If the, the whole thing was set up by business owners, landowners, and investors, and the game is rigged in their favor, right? I like to say the game is rigged, but at the same time, it's fair. How could something be rigged and fair at the same time? It's rigged in favor of business owners, landowners, and investors. It's fair in America because anybody today, tomorrow, next week, next month, next year could become a business owner, landowner, or investor. At any time, you don't like the team that you're playing on because you're losing. You're just one decision away from getting on the winning team. See, what we have to stop doing as a people is stop complaining about the game and learn how to play. See, it makes no sense. I'm, I'm a youth basketball coach. You, you guys know that. And, and I train kids and, and athletically and all other sports. But I'm a youth coach and I, I like to teach the game of basketball because there are a lot of parallels in, to life in the game of basketball. But it would make no sense for me to get on the basketball court and I take the ball, somebody passes me the ball inbound, I take the ball and I run without dribbling as fast as I can to the other end and I jump as high as I can and I do a reverse 360 triple windmill slam dunk and boom. If I could do that every time, I would do it at every time. But what is the referee going to do? He's going to blow the whistle and say, that looked real good, my man, but it don't count worth nothing. Because you violated the rules. Now, it does me no good to argue and fuss and fight with the referee about that particular rule. Why? Because me fussing and fighting about that particular rule is not going to change it. See, we like to sit back and complain about the rules of the game instead of learning how to play. If you hear to complain about taxes, uh, that's not what this is for. I'm here to teach you how to play the game. Right? I know there, there, there is there is some things that, that, that's out there. And, and, and if you look throughout the Constitution and that kind of stuff, there is literally no, no mandate, no law, no statute that says we have to pay income tax. I get it. I get it that if you declare your sovereignty, you don't have to pay income tax. You don't have to deal with that. But I'm saying for most people, they're not going to challenge whether or not taxes are legal. Most people aren't going to declare their sovereignty. So before you just go and pay 33% of your taxes willy-nilly, let's talk about how to play this game and how to get on the winning team. Stop complaining about wealthy people hardly pay taxes. Become wealthy and you don't hardly have to pay taxes either. That's what we're talking about. How do you do that? You have three choices. You have three choices. Who did we say the game was rigged in favor of? Business owners, landowners, or investors. If you want to get access to those 400-something tax deductions, then you need to become a business owner, landowner, or investor. Now, here's what's super cool about the tax code. Uh, 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 in the, the late 80s, early 90s, they made pr uh, uh, provisions within the tax code to recognize home-based businesses as legit business entities with all of the rights of any other business. So I'm going to give you an example. I don't know if you guys can see this shirt, right? This shirt says St. Louis Elite Basketball Academy, bigger, stronger, faster camp, right? I'm going to tell you how simple it is to get on the winning team. To get on the winning team, to start my own business, to run out of my home, it cost me $9 to get on the winning team. And you don't even have to pay that. It cost me $9 to go from paying 33% in taxes to paying 18 to 23% in taxes. 
You guys, you, you catch that? I, I want you to, to understand how it, man, listen, $9. It cost me $9 to go from paying $33, 33% in taxes and just income tax and, and almost 50 to 60% in taxes in general to paying 18 to 23% in taxes total. I want you to type in the chat if you heard that. Type $9 in the chat if you heard that. This is what it cost me to go from paying almost 60% of my income in taxes to only paying 18 to 23%. $9. Type $9 in the chat. So when I say the game is rigged and it's fair at the same time, it's rigged towards those who have businesses, those who uh, invest, or those who own land. I can't go buy no land with nine dollars, right? Well, actually, I can, but that's that's another 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 show, right? Uh, you can't invest for nine dollars, but here's what I did with nine dollars. I started a business with nine dollars. I started Solid Foundation Athletic Academy with $9. What did I have to do? I had to go to the Secretary of State's website and file me a DBA, a fictitious name, that says, yes, Hernando Springer is in business doing business at Solid Foundation Athletic Academy. The moment I did that, I got access to all 450 of those tax deductions. That means the area in my house that I use to train kids is now a tax write-off. That means the equipment that I went out and bought to train kids was a tax write-off. I write all of that off. That means when I go to a basketball tournament where my son happens to be playing in that tournament, I don't necessarily go there to watch him play. I go there to promote my basketball academy, <laughs> right? And that means all my expenses tied up in that now become tax deductible. Some of these tournaments that I go promote my business in are in Chicago. We was in Indiana. We was in Minneapolis. We were in Kansas City. Um, we were in uh, Atlanta. We were all over the place this year. And I, uh, most of those places I drove my personal vehicle. All of those miles I put on my personal vehicle were tax deductible. See, I want you to see the tax code as a tool or a vehicle for building wealth and not some oppressive system that is robbing you of your money. If you are being robbed of your money because of taxes after today's show, shame on you. Because everybody got $9. And in your state, it might not even be $9. It might be $5. In Missouri, it's nine dollars, eight dollars and fifty cent to file a fictitious business name, a DBA. Right. So now everything that I do that relates to sports is a tax write off for me. A percentage of my mortgage is a tax write off. I put a new roof on the house. That's a tax write off. Why? Because my I operate my business from my home. I need a cell phone to for people to call me and book appointments with me so my cell phone is tax deductible. I need internet services to run my website so my internet service is tax deductible. Even though I, I don't have service right now, I'm going to have to call charter and kick. But you guys starting to understand how you see the tax system differently. You see the, see the tax system differently. Guess what? When I go out to feed my face and I decide to spend some money at the black owned restaurant, I talk business and I make all of my appointments when I want, when I want to go eat, I make my appointments at a restaurant where I can go eat, take care of business. And now uncle Sam is picking up the tab for my meals. Are you guys starting to get it? Are you guys starting to get it? So 
I want you guys to list some passions for me real quick. List something that you're passionate about really quickly and let's turn it into a business right now. I'm going to show you how simple it is to get access to the tax code and make Uncle Sam yo chick, right? I'm going to show you how to make Uncle Sam yo chick. Or oh, I like to call him Nephew Sam now, right? I like to call him Nephew Sam now. He's not Uncle Sam, he's Nephew Sam. Right? List, list something that you're passionate about right now. And, it, and, and, and here's how you can spend that $9 and you can be fully in business today. Uh, 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 Lawrence says he's passionate about education. So Lawrence, go to uh, Secretary of State website for your state and you file a fictitious name that says Lawrence Educational Services or Financial Education. Financial Education by Lawrence, that's your service, right? Then you go and build a Facebook fan page, which is free. So you spend nine dollars to register your fictitious name. Now you got a presence online that's free. You don't even have to have your own website yet. Now that's free. Now you are in business. Now every time Lawrence goes to sit down and have a meal, he hands somebody his business card or tells them about his financial education business. It's a tax write-off. Not only is the meal a tax write-off, the miles that he drove to the restaurant to have that meal is a tax write-off. I put about 10,000 miles on my vehicle every year for basketball. 10,000 miles times 50 cents a mile is $5,000 in a tax write-off. And I'll show you how that works in a second, right? So uh, let's see. Uh, uh, Karen says caregiving, right? Caregiving. Uh, uh, Karen's caregiving with love go to your secretary of state file that fictitious name set you up a Facebook fan page you are in business now anytime that you buy anytime you spend money to promote or uh, and, and bring in business for Karen's caregiving with love it's a tax write off for you you operate that business out of your home, now a percentage of your mortgage is a tax write-off. Because you operate that business from your home, up to 30% of your utilities, your gas, your lights, your, your, your telephone, your water bill is a tax write-off. And here's how that all works. So say for instance, I make $50,000 in a year. At 30%, 33% of $50,000, that means I pay $18,000 in taxes. $18,000. Right? So that means I bring home thirty two. dollars Chances are with that $32,000, I have to go finance my car and my house. I have other bills to pay, so by the time I pay the money back to the mortgage companies and the finance companies for the car, I'm going to give them 18, and that's going to leave me with about 14, right? It's going to leave me with about 14, and I'm trying to live off 14,000. Now, if you understand what I'm talking about here and how to use this tool, then that means that your as an employee, you do the work, you pay taxes second, and then you try to live off what's left. As a business owner, my business works first, I get to spend on my business, then I pay taxes on what's left. So I make the same 50000 on my job, but I have a business that I spent $25,000 in running my business and trying to grow my business and trying to take my business to the next level. So I don't get taxed on $50,000. Uncle Sam says, wait a minute, you made $50,000, you had $25,000 in business deductions, but you didn't really have any business profit. So we're going to subtract the $25,000 from the fifty dollars that you made on your job. And now you're going to pay taxes on $25,000 and not fifty. dollars I'm still taxed the same 30% or so, but 30% of fifty 
versus 30% of 25 is vastly different. So I might pay 9,000 in taxes on the 25 where I paid 18,000 in taxes on the 50. You see how that big gap is, that, that, that big disparity? That's the difference is what you use to build wealth with. So the difference between 18,000 and 9,000 is nine. What do you do with that other 9,000 that will cause you to build wealth on a whole nother level? That's 9,000 in tax savings every year. You take that 9,000 in tax savings and you get yourself out of debt. Might take you a couple years to do it. But this, this 9,000 in savings, this is yours every year. Couple years, get yourself out of debt. Same time you're getting out of debt, you're working on a mini emergency fund, three, four thousand dollars put to the side just in case something comes up. Transmission go out in the car. It's not an emergency, it's just an inconvenience because you got the money, bam. Right? But that nine thousand becomes your wealth builder. Get yourself out of debt. Once yourself is out of debt and you got that emergency fund, imagine being able to invest nine thousand dollars a year every year till you leave this planet. Every year that could be your investment. That's how you build generational wealth using the tax code. I know there's not a whole lot of people teaching you guys this. That's why we created the Black Wealth Movement is we need to teach real wealth building strategies that's going to work on a personal level. This is nothing against anybody out there who is trying to lift our people up and they're doing a lot of things that we need to be doing collectively. It's just my humble opinion that until we get people right personally with their finances, we can't do anything collectively. That's just my humble opinion. Because I've been part of movements and I've been part of organizations and we've been trying to make things happen in the community. But then something goes wrong at home, I gotta pull back from that and take care of home. What if everybody who's in any sort of movement right now, what if home was taken care of? See, some of y'all can't even go join a protest because it can literally get you fired. What if you were independently wealthy, though? And it didn't matter whether you got fired or not. Huh? What if you were independently wealthy and you wanted to go join the front lines of a protest for anything? It, I don't care what it is that's going on. Some of you guys can't even speak out against injustice on your Facebook page because your employer monitors your Facebook page. What if you were independently wealthy and didn't have to rely on the income that comes from your employer? What if that was your side hustle and you were just doing that to make vacation money? And if that came to an end, you were still straight. See, this is our mission. This is what the Black Wealth Movement is all about. We're trying to get people to a state of being independently wealthy because you can't, you know, what, what's funny is uh, yesterday's show, we, we, we talked about uh, why the NFL players won't uh, uh, boycott the NFL with Colin Kaepernick, right? And then later, Des Bryant comes out and says, I'm not speaking on that because I got a family to feed. So, Des, you telling me you 10 years in the league, you done already made millions and you can't speak on an injustice because you got a family to feed? Meaning that the first set of millions that you made, what did you do with that? What did you do with that? Did you squander all it? What, what did you do with that that you have to rely on the next million the next paycheck from your the next game from this season to feed your family 
See, if you've done the right thing with your money, when you see an injustice, you can stand up against that injustice and say, hey, wait a minute, wait a minute. Y'all can't do my man Colin Kaepernick like that. Because what's done to anybody who's a part of our union is done to all of us in our union. But he said, I can't comment on that because I got a fam to feed. Which tells me he's over leveraged and has overspent the money that he's made in his first few years in the league. The millions that he made. And he's counting on these future millions to continue that lifestyle. It's wrong, Diz. Now, if you tell me that you're not standing with Colin because there is some principles involved, I get it. If y'all fundamentally disagree, cool. I got no problem with those who say that you shouldn't sit doing the national anthem because that's their fundamental. That's how they feel, right? I, I have no issues with that. But if you're saying the only reason, if you're saying I recognize it's an injustice, but I can't stand with you because I'm not financially secure enough to whether if I lose my job, I, I, I'm, I'm not going to be able to maintain my lifestyle, then that's exactly what the Black Wealth Movement is about. We've got to put people in a position financially to where you don't depend on a single source of income. You don't depend on a single source of income. Right? You got to think about pulling a... a um, uh, Marshawn Lynch and live off your endorsements. He lived off his endorsements because he didn't trust the NFL. They might come back and try to sue me and get all this money back. You're absolutely right. They're, just, they're, they're not free. They're not free. They're not free. So, if you understand anything that I said, and today, if, Bobby, if, if you let the close of business happen on you today, and you don't have a business, shame on you. Shame on you. I, it, it doesn't really matter what it is. The IRS requires three things in order for you to start using the tax code to build wealth. Number one, they require that you uh, run your business in an attempt or in a pursuit of making a profit. Number two, they require that you work your business on a regular and consistent basis so that it's not considered a hobby. A hobby is something I pick up and put down whenever I want to. Now, if I'm working, my, if I have a business, then I'm going to work that business to make a profit consistently at least 45 minutes a day. That's what they have determined as a good barometer for working consistently, just 45 minutes per day. You mean to tell me that I can save fifteen to twenty thousand dollars every year by just putting in forty five minutes a day of attempting to make a profit in the business, whether I make a profit or not? Kimberly says she has a business, she she helps she helps start up. Right. So if you don't have a business, contact Kimberly and let her help you start one. <laughs> right? So they require that you work your business uh, in an attempt to make a profit, that you work it on a regular and consistent basis, and that you maintain good records. So as part of the Black Wealth Movement, we give you a tool called the Cash Flow Manager that allows you to track all of your expenses and income as it relates to your business, makes record keeping easy. You can do it right from your cell phone, even take pictures of the receipt. Right? So it is really, really, really that simple. It's really, really, really that simple. So if you don't have a business and you want to plug in with the Black Wealth Movement, we give you a financial education franchise as a business to get you started. Now, if you want to later add another business to that around something that you're more passionate about, cool. But if you don't have a business at all, join the Black Wealth Movement and you get a business, $35 a month. $35 a month. That's it. Right? And that includes all of the education and training on how to write off your lifestyle. It includes branding and marketing training. 
It includes uh, the cash flow manager, the tools that you need to execute your game plan. It includes credit restoration uh, program so you can fix your credit. Man, it's, it's just crazy. It, 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 I mean, we're helping people build wealth using the tax code as a primary tool and we're using entrepreneurship because you can't access the tax code without a business. If you're accessing the tax code without a business, then you're on the wrong side. No one said he's owned the business since 1990. You got to. You got to. Karen, I'm glad that, that, that it, it helped you. I'm glad. If you don't have a business, you can plug in with the Black Wealth Movement for $35 a month. We can help you understand these laws, and then we can help you uh, put your caregiving business together and start running that as well. Right? So remember, you have to have proper perspective. We got to stop looking at Uncle Sam as a slave master and start looking at him as a servant, right? We can serve you. Uh, our Uncle Sam is here to serve you, but you got to understand the rules. We got to stop uh, complaining about the game and start learning how to play, right? I, 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 I used to spend a lot of time hating the game, hating the player. My life changed dramatically when I stopped hating and started learning how to play. I started looking at the things that wealthy people are able to do because they have small businesses that don't even make a whole lot of money. They don't even make a whole lot of money, but because they have, just by sheer fact that they have businesses, by sheer fact that they own land, sure fact that they have investment portfolios, they get access to a whole nother set of tax laws that allows them to build wealth even faster. This same set of tax laws also allows them to pass wealth down to the next generation without it being taxed. Because I'm about to go set up my structures where all of my children will sit on the board of the corporation of my holding company so that when I pass on, they just automatically move up into the next line of ownership of my company and the company just runs without no probate, without no taxation, none of that. And they own all of my holdings and all of my companies that are under my holding company. That's strategy, y'all. Wealthy people use strategy. They don't work harder. They work the, the, uh, the one place that wealthy people tend to work harder than poor people is they work harder at sourcing out the knowledge to help them build their game plans. That's the one area that wealthy people do work harder than, than poor and, and working people. They work harder at studying the system so they can find these loopholes. It's the one area I would definitely suggest that LLC. They work harder at finding and studying the system for loopholes that they can incorporate into their wealth building strategy. See, we believe that income can only come from one place and that's a job. So we work hard at one job and then we go get a second job. And when you work two jobs, you're taxed twice as much. That is not a strategy. It's not a strategy. Work one job, start a business to reduce the taxes that you pay on the one job, take the tax savings and start to invest. Take the tax savings and get yourself out of debt. Take the tax savings and build your emergency fund. And then if you join the Black Wealth Movement, we teach you how to get that credit score up to 750 or higher. Then we teach you how to build wealth with other people's money. Huh? Now, depending on your state to one, it might cost you anywhere between uh, 50 to 100 dollars to register an LLC. Anywhere from 50 to 100 dollars to register an LLC. So yeah, and PA is it's one twenty five, depending on your state, depending on your state. That's exactly why he said not paying taxes make him smart. Now, the reason he said it is because he's independently wealthy. The other wealthy people in the room who understood the rem the potential ramifications of that statement, 
It's like, oh man, don't give up the game. But when you're independently wealthy, you don't care. That's, you think Donald Trump cares about being impeached? He's going to go back to living his billion dollar lifestyle. He, so he can do things that he feel is right. Whether we think they're right or not, he can do things that he feel is right for the company and don't have to answer to nobody because he don't care if he gets impeached. The $9 is just to register your fictitious name, A.V. That's, that's the starting point. So you register your fictitious name at least and you're doing business as, so you're in business. Now, the uh, LLC as a second layer of protection to your business. So, so the LLC means it limits your liability. So now your company becomes separate from AV the person. All right, just a hundred dollars. Legal Zoom was gonna charge five hundred. Yeah, man, it's it's a it's a paperwork that you file. If you guys want to do something, go to uh, hit up my girl Yvette Best. She's got a book on uh, on how to set up your LLC. Two ninety nine on Amazon. And she'll walk you through the steps. Two ninety nine. I, I think she's under Yvette Best. If you go to Amazon and search for author, and I think the name of the book is "The Benefits of Becoming an LLC." It's a short little ebook. Two ninety nine. And it'll walk you through the steps of setting that up. What's a GE license? I'm not sure what a GE license is. <laughs> I'm not sure. What does the GE stand for? Yeah, Yvette Best on Amazon. She's Yvette Best on Amazon. I think she's Armstrong on Facebook, but she's Best on Amazon. The benefits of becoming an LLC. So when you understand just this part of playing the, the, the money game, it takes you to a whole nother level. And then there are some other levels that you can go to even above this like with corporate structures and holding companies and all of that kind of stuff man it, there's there's levels to this right uh it says the app asks for a login but not the ability to create a new one do you have to be enrolled in the my econ program to use it no but the, you do have to uh, it's ten ninety five a month if you just want to uh, use that app. If you want to buy that app, it's ten ninety five per month to uh, get that app. But I can't remember Tony Davis. Which Tony Davis is that? So it's not a it's not a free app. No, it's not a free app. But it's ten ninety five per month. Uh, if you want, I can send you my uh, join link. Uh, so that you can purchase that through me. That would be uh, your way of supporting the program this morning. Uh, that would be great. Uh, so just hit me in my inbox and I can send you that. Uh, and basically you'll sign up for a seven day trial for free. And then if you like it, after you play around with it for seven days, then um, you can go ahead and, and, and pay for it. Uh, and for it saves money and it's more beneficial to join my account. Yeah, it is. There, there's other things to do. Uh, other things that you have access to when you join my econ, it just, it, it's just crazy. It, it's crazy what, 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 what that program offers. It's a black owned company. Uh, that's why it's, it's the, it's the engine behind the black wealth movement. Um, yeah, so hit me in the inbox and I will, I will send you the link and then you can, uh, try it out for seven days. And if you like it, then it's just 1095 per month. Um. But yeah, you take your record keeping on the fly. And then what we started to do now uh, um, is, uh, thanks to Nicole, is print out your monthly statement every month. And then you'll have 12 of those, or in this case, you have four or five of them because you're starting now. And you just give those to your uh, accountant and then they can keep your records really easy, right? Really, really easy. Very, very simple tool uh, to operate and to use. Any questions before we get out of here? I know we started late, so we're a little bit uh, beyond the, the hour. Any questions before we get out of here? And you guys keep my girl Nicole in your prayers, man. Uh, uh, Lee, uh, her fiance, lost his mom uh, yesterday. Uh, so definitely keep her in your prayers. Uh, 
Uh, yes, wine saves me so much money because when I purchase products for my company, uh, it's at the lowest price possible for a wholesale. Yes, yes, yes. Definitely that. So that would be a, another another part of the game is uh, getting that LLC, getting your tax ID number, and you start going to these wholesale outlets and purchasing through your business tax ID number, and that saves you money. See, there, there, I mean... Like I said, man, you just got to study the game, study the game, right? Because a lot of there, there, a lot of these places you get, you get, you get access to so many stuff at, at, at better prices when you purchase as a corporation or, or a business through your business tax ID number than as a regular retailer. That saves you money. Then it's a tax write-off, which is going to save you more money. And again, those savings, you got to know what to do with them, though. You got to know what to do with them. You got to know what to do with them. Any questions before we get out this morning? Appreciate you guys tuning in. Hopefully you guys learned something. Hopefully you know now that Uncle Sam is your servant and not your slave master. Put Uncle Sam to work. That's what wealthy people do. We talk about wealthy people not making, not paying a lot of taxes. And we usually say it from the standpoint, we, we usually say it with a negative connotation. Like we're mad at them because they have sense enough to not pay overpaying taxes. We're mad. It's like, why are you mad? Why are you mad that they know a strategy? Learn the strategy. It's crazy. Right? We literally get mad that they pay low, uh, 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 lower taxes. It's the wealthy people. They don't pay no taxes. They're taking all these taxes out of my check and I got to... Like, no, do what the wealthy do and you don't got to pay all them taxes either. It's not hard. But you can't play the game unless you be start a business, become an investor, or own real estate. The game is rigged in favor of those three entities because everybody who was on the, the, the mission to start this company, start this country, or, or I said it right, start this company, Right. That's where they are. They stood in one of those three lots. They were either a business owner, land owner or investor. So I said, OK, let me learn how to play the game. And then I partnered up with my econ and the black wealth movement. And they they teach the game better than anybody else. In fact, not only do they teach the game better than anybody else, they're the only ones teaching the game. They're the only ones teaching the game. I heard Robert, Robert Kiyosaki teaches the game, but to his students. So you have to pay thousands of dollars to become one of his students to learn the game. We teach you that same game for $34.95. Teach you that same game for $34.95. Right? Jay-Z is giving you the game for $9.99. We're giving you the game for $34.95. She got to plug in. BlackWealthMovement2017.com If you want to learn more about what we're doing with the MyEcom platform and how we're working it and using it to rebuild our community one family at a time, you can go there and learn and then get with anybody that you see these, these memes with these black, red, and green, and gold memes. Anybody that you see with one of those memes, ask them about the Black Wealth Movement. Ask them about the Black Wealth Movement. Ask them about their personal experience with the Black Wealth Movement. And I'm sure they'll tell you it's one of the best decisions they ever made. Not because of me, but because of the vision, because of the platform, because of uh, the structure of my econ, because of how we're putting it all together. Ask anybody with one of these memes what their personal experience is with the Black Wealth Movement. Just ask them. And we can help get you plugged in. In fact, we'll get you plugged in for just $10. Then it's $35 per month. And you'll learn these strategies and way more. You'll learn these strategies and more. So with that, that's it for tonight. Uh, today, tomorrow, we'll do uh, Free Game Friday. 
We'll ask, answer any questions that you may have. So come back tomorrow and hang out with us, man. We give all types of branding and marketing tips, strategies on how to build your business, how to explode. Uh, also, uh, Monetize My Life Academy. If you need some uh, tips on building a bigger, better, more bolder brand, then you certainly can uh, check out MonetizeMyLifeAcademy.com as well. That is the branding and marketing genius behind the Black Wealth Movement. But if you don't want to join the Black Wealth Movement, you have your own thing going on, but you need to learn how to brand a little bit better, then um, followers of this show get a 50% discount on the monthly membership over there. It's $97 a month uh, to, be a, uh, uh, to join the Monetize My Life Academy, but I can get you in for $47 per month. And not just off your first month, it'll be $47 per month for you, period. And you get access to all of my branding and marketing secrets, plus those of others, all sorts of courses on Instagram, YouTube, Twitter, how to build on all of these platforms, internet marketing, video marketing, uh, uh, email marketing. I've got something in there for every way that you want to market and grow your business. $47 a month gets you access to all of that good information. If you mention that you're a part of the show, inbox me and I'll give you that special coupon code where you can go sign up for Monetize My Life Academy and we teach you how to build brand, a bigger and bolder, brighter brand. So I'm Ace Cortez, the one and only financial health mentor to the black community. So I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. I want you to get your money up because you absolutely can do it. Peace out, y'all.